The phylogenetic tree is a chart that helps explain organisms' relationship to each other. This is the tree of all life, and life is basically broken up into three different types of cells, which are bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Bacteria and archaea are both prokaryotes, which means that their cells have no organelles in them, while eukarya are eukaryotic cells, which means that they do have organelles. Sea urchins and humans are both eukarya and fall under the animalia kingdom. This next phylogenetic tree depicts only the animal kingdom. On the phylogenetic tree of life, the animal kingdom is only a tiny, tiny branch. The animal kingdom breaks up into two major groups, the invertebrates, the organisms with no backbones, and the vertebrates, the organisms with backbones. The vertebrates are represented in the larger group called chordata. The sea urchins are invertebrates in a group of echinoderms. The echinoderms and chordata are closely related, coming from the same ancestor, Deuterostomia. The echinoderms are the most closely related to humans out of any of the other invertebrates. The term echinoderm means spiny skin, and most echinoderms do have a spiny skin. Echinoderms are marine, which means that they live in salt water, and they are bottom dwellers. Also, echinoderms are radically symmetrical, which means that everything about them is equally arranged around a central point. The subgroup of echinoderms, which the sea urchin belongs to, is the echinoidea. The echinoidea are covered in sharp spines to protect themselves from predators. They also have five paired rows of tube feet on the bottom of their bodies to move along the ocean floor. This experiment requires 1. 0.5 milliliters of potassium chloride solution, at least 2 gallons of seawater, fertile urchins, both a male and a female, 1. 5 cc syringe with the number 25 needle, 3 plastic pipettes, at least 2 micro centrifuge tubes, 2 sterile beakers, 1 microscope, and 1 scope cam. To complete the experiment, pick up a sea urchin, of course wearing gloves, and inject it with 0.1 to 0.2 milliliters of potassium chloride solution per inch of the sea urchin. You will give the urchin a total of two injections. Both injections will be on either side of the soft tissue of the sea urchin, which is surrounding its teeth. Next, place the sea urchin face down in a sterile dish, if it is male. The dish should not have any water in it. In a few minutes, you will see a whitish clear sperm appear on the surface of the sea urchin. Collect the sperm in a pipette and place it in a microcentrifuge tube. Store the sperm at a cold temperature around four degrees Celsius. If the sea urchin is a female, Place it over a beaker full of salt water. Then the female will start dropping her eggs, which will appear in orangish color. She will not drop her eggs unless in contact with the seawater. It can take 10 to 40 minutes for the sea urchin to complete shedding. The females should be placed mouth side up over the beaker. Dilute the sperm with water so that there is a 1% sperm solution. Then suck up some of the 1% sperm solution and some of the eggs in a pipette. Gently mix and squirt into a petri dish. View the sea urchin cells using the microscope. Watch the eggs be fertilized and then the cells divide. Periodically take pictures and videos using the scope camera. In order to keep the cells alive, be sure not to keep the light under the microscope on for too long. It will fry the cells. After viewing the cells, be sure to turn off the light. Also, change the salt water in the petri dish. Remove the old water, at least half of it, and put in new salt water. You must make sure that the cells never are dry and that there is always plenty of water in the dish. 
in the wild, sea urchin mating is triggered by certain environmental factors. When the males sense a larger concentration of phyloplankton in the sea, they release their sperm, which triggers more male urchins to release their sperm and female urchins to release their eggs. The female urchins release less eggs, about a million or so, while the male urchins release about 10 billion sperm. The sperm and eggs are carried by water currents throughout the ocean, and eventually the eggs are fertilized. They may survive floating around the ocean for about six weeks to then land on the ocean bottom and begin to develop into adult sea urchins. The sea urchin eggs have a better chance of being fertilized in a slow current than they do in a fast current. In a fast current, if the eggs are at a distance from the sperm, then they will probably not be fertilized. Well, in a slow current, even if the eggs are a short distance away from the sperm, they still have a decent chance of being fertilized. To get the right amount of sperm and egg, the sperm must be diluted. If there is too high a concentration of sperm, more than one sperm can attach to each egg, resulting in polyspermy and unusual embryo development. The sperm activates the egg to begin the cell cycle in embryonic development. The sperm triggers development by binding to a receptor protein on the egg's plasma membrane. The acrosome is a cap over the sperm that contains digestive enzymes which help break down the egg's membrane. When the sperm receptors come into contact with the egg, the acrosome fuses with the plasma membrane. Actin pushes the sperm receptors towards the egg so that they can bind with it. To prevent polyspermy, which is a lethal binding of multiple sperm to one egg, the urchin uses flask block. Fast block happens one tenth of a second after the sperm fuses with the egg. Salt channels in the egg membrane are opened, depolarizing the membrane and making it difficult for any other sperm to bind to the membrane. The slow block to polyspermy happens within 10 seconds of the sperm binding to the egg membrane. Calcium is released from the endoplasmic reticulum and ends up binding, deactivating binding receptors on the membrane. The fertilization envelope is the space created during this process as the vitelline swells away from the egg's plasma membrane. This movement prevents any other sperm from binding on to the plasma membrane. About 20 minutes after the in vitro fertilization of the sea urchin, there were some unfertilized cells which appeared as clear circles, some fertilized cells which had a dark halo around them. This dark halo was the fertilization envelope, and some rapidly dividing cells, which appeared bubbly as they split into smaller separate cells. Almost four hours after the in vitro fertilization, there were no more unfertilized cells. The unfertilized cells had died. 12 or 18 separate cells could clearly be seen within each embryo, and there were many dark masses which depicted that the cells were dividing quickly.